A person can live around the most holy lands of the world, Mecca, Medina, Quds, and not have actions which are pleasing to Allah. This person's living in the most sacred place in the world will not help this person or save this person from the punishment of God if this person does not have actions to back up his akhirah. The Prophet ﷺ said very clearly to his own family, "Man amalu lam bihi nasab." If your actions don't add up to your salvation, your lineage cannot save you. The only relationship Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has with me, with you, and anyone that came before is that we're His abd, and the more good that we do, the closer we are to Him. The more good that we do. Closer we are to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Hadith Qudsi, Man adali waliyan faqad adantuhu bil Anyone that shows animosity to my friend, I wage war against this person. Now, how does this person all of a sudden become the friend of Allah? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wama taqarraba ilayya abdi bi shayin habba ilayya mimma iftaratu alay. Nothing makes a person closer to Allah than a person just doing what you've been asked to do. Just do what you've been asked to do. And nothing makes a person further than Allah than doing what you just feel like doing. The Prophet ﷺ said to Abu Hurairah, to the Sahaba, مَنْ يَأْخُذُنِي هَؤُلَاءِ الْكَلِمَاتِ فَيَعْمَلُوا بِهِنَّا أَوْ يُعَلِّمُوا مَنْ يَعْمَلُوا بِهِنَّا I'm going to teach you five things. Who's going to take this from me? Live by it. Or teach someone that can live by it. يَعْمَلُوا بِهِنَّا means live by it. Or you man يَعْمَلُوا بِهِنَّ Or teach it to someone that can ap- apply it. No one raised their hand. This is Prophet saying that you have to live by it or teach someone. Everyone's is has everyone's hesitant. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu says, "Ana ya Rasulullah." And then the Prophet says, "There are five. Fa'adda khamsan. One, two, three, four. You got it." Abu Hurairah says, "Yes, I got it." He says, "Number one, ittaqil maharim takun a'bad nas Stay away from things which are unlawful. Allah will make you his closest servant. The closest a person could be to Allah is the person who stays further from those actions that disappoint Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no other relationship we have with Allah. مَا تَقَرَّبَ إِلَيَّ عَبْدِي بِشَيْنَ حَبَّ إِلَيَّ مَفْتَرَطُ عَلَيْهِ Allah made salah farad, respect for parents obligated, charity, zakah is obligated, siyam, these are obligations. Men used to come to the Prophet, Bedouins. These were simple people. Ja'arabi ila nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Faqala ya Rasulullah, wa ma al-Islam. In some narration, man najat. What is Islam? What is this success that you're calling towards? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make this person understand the five pillars. That's all he would do. An tashhadu illa ilaha illallah, wa anna Muhammad Rasulullah, wa tuqim al-salat. In some narration, Hajj was not even obligated. It wasn't even prescribed. This simple Bedouin, Baddu, would get up and he would say to the Prophet, Wallahi. And he, sometimes he would say, Walladhi ba'ath. In one narration, this man goes, Walladhi ba'athaka bil haqq. I swear by the one that sent you with the truth. La azidu wa la anqus. I'm not doing more than this. It sounds harsh, but he said, I'm not doing more than this, and I'm not going to do less than this. I'm going to do exactly what you said. Sahaba find this to be this obnoxious, this person so blunt. If I give a khutbah just on salah in this hadith, and my student stands up, says, Shaykh Abdullah, I'm not coming to no halaqa, I'm not coming to no qiyam al-layl, that's it. That's all I'm doing. Everyone around might find this to be disrespectful. The Prophet Sallallahu looks at the Sahaba and he says, Man ila rajulin min ahl jannah, fal ila hadha. Anyone that wants to witness someone from paradise, they look at the simple man, understood the truth. We overcomplicate it. It's simple. Our relationship with Allah is how good our actions are in front of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna ladina amanu wa aminu salihati lahum jannatun tajri min tahti. Everywhere, believe and act. The belief has to enforce act. Allah says, "Man amila saliham min dhakrin aw unta wa huwa mu'min." You believe, you do good deeds. I promise you, "Fala nuhiyannahu hayatun tayyiba." I'm going to give you a joyful, prosperous, you know, content life, a life where you feel 
Even if you have minimum in this world, but you're content. Life is going to be amazing. Sometimes you start to think, I'm being rewarded so much now. What is going to be my reward in Akhirah? Allah says, no. We're going to give them more than they deserve. The opposite is also real. If you turn your eye to, away from Allah, and you ignore one by one, adhan, salah, parents, sins, exposure. It happens. Sometimes it's subjective, sometimes it's selective. But we're doing it constantly. Allah says in the Quran, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. Don't come back 20 years later and say, man, I need a counselor. Let me see what happens. وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ You live your life ignoring Allah. Dhikri is the deen of Allah. It's the lifestyle. إِنَّ فِي ذَلِكَ لَذِكْرَى لِمَنْ كَانْ لَهُ قَلْبٌ أَوْ أَلْقَى السَّمْعَ وَهُ الشَّهِيدٌ Dhikra here is superlative now. It's a mubalagha, a mu'annad. This Qur'an is the dhikr. You, you and I ignore this lifestyle, we're not going to have an enjoyable, enjoy, enjoyable life. It's going to be apparently, we're going to pay for it. We're going to pay a big price for it. Hefty amount to smile. We're going to pay double that to feel happy, to feel satisfied. If you disobey Allah constantly, Allah says, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِ فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكَ Life is going to be miserable. This life, marriage, children, families, it's going to be, everything is going to, it's, nothing opens up. Everything feels constrained on you. The Prophet ﷺ said, إِنَّ مَثَلَ الَّذِي يَعْمَلُ السَّيِّئَاتِ A person that does sins, one by one, كَمَثَلِ الرَّجُلْ كَانَتْ عَلَيْهِ دِرْعٌ خَنَقَتْهُ Hadith Muslim Ahmed. It's like a person who's wearing an armor. And for us, it might be a, something like a seat belt or, or a, a vest, uh, you know. And you wear it tight. قَدْ خَنَقَتْهُ And it starts to choke you. And this person does another sin and the, the, you feel constrained, even in this open world. طَاقَتْ عَلَيْهِمُ الْأَرْضُ بِمَا رَحُبَتْ you have big homes, big backyards, daqat. It's tight. The hadith of Rasulullah says, ثُمَّ إِذَا عَمِلَ حَسَنَا Then a person starts to do good deeds. فَانْكَفَّتْ حَلَقَةً One by one, the rings of this armor start to become loose. فَانْكَفَّتْ حَلَقَةً أُخْرَى Then he does or she does another good deed. They pray, they try to find ways back to God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it loosens, it loosens. Finally, this person is released of the shackles of their desires. Otherwise, these desires make a person miserable. Have we not seen the story of Yusuf? Yusuf, when he is tempted, he says, Allah says in Surah Yusuf, he saw the light of God. He saw what was going to happen if he indulged. What was the result of this? He went to jail. Correct. That's what we remember. Remember the Rex. Next part. He gets to become the minister of finance. The leader of Egypt from the bottom and the depth of the, of the jail. Why? Because he knew he was true to Allah. Inna Rabbi ahsana mathwaya. I know Allah is good to me. And then, and then the brothers, when they see him successful, because the last time they remember him is in the bottom of the well. Qalu tallah. Wow. Because the story doesn't add up. You were the youngest. You were the most bullied. We tortured you. We threw you in the bottom of the well. It doesn't add up that you're the leader of the world, the powerful world. Egypt, Iskandari in that place, was the most powerful place in the world. And families from Palestine, from Sham, are coming to Egypt to get rents, get, get money, food, in, in seasons of drought. And they say, the, the highlight of Surah Yusuf is this ayah, of Yusuf's personal journey. Yaqub has his own journey in the Surah. قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ آثَرَكَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْنَا وَإِن كُنَّا لَخَاطِئِينَ Brothers and sisters, 
Imagine that day when we, inshallah, Allah protect us, someone is ignored by Allah. وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ Allah said to these people, وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيْتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا It all starts there. You have, we are not ignoring you because we hate you. You are being ignored because you had a whole life to run. The whole life of opportunities. وَقِيلَ الْيَوْمَ نَنْسَاكُمْ كَمَا نَسِيْتُمْ لِقَاءَ يَوْمِكُمْ هَذَا so the, the, don't think if you're going through hardship and you don't do tawbah, that's the end of it. No. If you're going through hardship, miserable difficulty, and you do tawbah, that hardship becomes ni'mah. It's okay. أَجَبَ amr al-mu'min. إِنَّ أَمْرَهُ لَوْ كُلَّهُ خَيْرٍ Every situation is good for a believer. But if the hardship doesn't make us repent, if the misery that comes in our life doesn't turn us back to Allah, and it makes us dig our hole deeper into this world, we're going to struggle in both worlds. It doesn't end here. This is why it's very important for all of us to understand that the actions that we do, they affect everyone. They affect your family. Allah says in the Quran, الْفَسَادُ بِالْبَرِّ وَالْبَحْرِ بِمَا كَسَبَ الْأَيْدِ النَّاسِ يُضِيقُمْ بَعْدَ الْيَعْمِلُ This is universal law. وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَ الْأَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُ عَنْ كَثِيرٍ It's a universal law. Someone said to me, Shaykh Abdullah, I don't do this. Not because I don't fear. I fear Allah, of course, but I'm afraid to hurt my children. So I don't disobey Allah. They love their children so much. Some people don't do it because they don't want to hurt their families, their relationships, their wealth, their barakah. Whatever it is, use that as a stepping stool. Eventually, you have to stop it for the sake of Allah. Allah is watching. And this affects people. We think money and power will conquer Muslims in victory. No, right? The famous story of the Muslim, that the Muslims, lama, you know, it comes in Ibn Qushir documents is says lama kharaja hirqal nahwal qasantiya when the king hirqal went to Constantinople. When he got there, the Muslims were conquering lands all around the world. There was a prisoner. That was, con- that was captured by the Muslim army. Fallat. This prisoner ran away and he just got away somehow. He just he was slick, he got away. <laughs> Finally, when the, the king Hilqa heard about him, he called him. He said, Come here, you were a captive in their prisons. I want to ask you a few questions. You know insight of the Muslims. He says, Akhbirni an ha'ula. Tell me who these people are. Muslims are telling me what the Muslims are about. I want to hear from you, you're not a Muslim. Akhbirni an ha'ula. Brothers and sisters, yesterday I was watching with some of the shabab. People, athletes, boxers, fighters, sports athletes are realizing Islam is a solution. They're converting to Islam, one by one. The amount of people that are converting to Islam in the United States of America is unprecedented. White, Latino, black, Atheists, Hindus, Jews, people are converting to Islam. And we have the cream of Islam sitting here. We can't look anywhere else. Look what this, what this man says to Hilqa. He says, ka ka I'm gonna put a, I'm gonna, I'm gonna describe them like I'm drawing them in front of you. I'm gonna give this great depiction. He says, number one, it's all action based. He says, Fawsan bin Nahar wa Ruhban bin Layl. During the day, there were riders on the horses. They would ride the back of the horse. What does that mean? They were moving. They were spreading Islam. Next, Khalid bin Walid. If you look at his life, he didn't sleep. He hardly slept. In one of the battles, Khalid bin Walid said, he made awth to Allah. So, oh Allah, if you give me victory, I'll do hajj. Victory just happened right before the hijjah. The journey back to Makkah was like 17 days for Hajj. How could you make it? It was like 10 days, 10, 9 days to Hajj. Got on the back of the horse, ran to Hajj. Got there on the day of Arafah, ran right back to the army. He said, I hope Umar bin Khattab never finds out because I made a promise to Allah. When he comes back, a letter is sent from Medina. Someone spotted you and Arafah. Stay with your army. Don't lead them next time. It's not acceptable. He was in it. 
He was in it. And if he wanted to reward himself for Allah's blessings, he did another thing for Allah. Oh Allah, you gave me this, I'm going to pray two rakat salah. I'm going to do umrah. It doesn't end. The party of Khalid bin Walid was a nine day journey that took seven days to get to Hajj. That was his reward. That's how he enjoyed it. So this person says, he's Rahkusan bin Naha wa Rahman bin Layl. At night time, he woke up. They prayed to Allah. Then, مَا يَأْكُلُونَ مِنْ ذِمَّةٍ إِلَّا بِثَمَنٍ If someone lived under their domain, if the subjects that lived under their, under their rulership, they never used their properties or wealth without legal permission. They would, they would do fair transactions. Then he would say, لا يدخلون إلا بسلام. They never enter a community or a home or a room by, by saying as-salam, peace. That's, you can sense it from their language, their body language. Then he said, يقفون على من حربهم حتى يأتون إليه. They don't begin the war. They're not bloodthirsty. They're not war hogs. They don't want to fight. It is them that wait until someone attacks, then they defend. Every single situation has a defensive strategy on these people. They, they don't begin the fights. Hilqa, he says to this ex-convict, he says, In kunta sadaqtani, if you're honest to me, These people are going to rule the land that I'm standing on. Constantinople. And Muhammad's Fatih came a few years later. Just a matter of time. All of us watched the Urtuqal show. This is where it starts. It started from here. It didn't start from the swords. It didn't start from the warriors. Hercules says it himself. This land is going to be this. Just enjoy it for a few more years. When the Muslims, when uh, Sa'i Waqas in the Battle of Yarmouk, one of the great battles of Islam, when he conquered the land, everyone was collecting the spoils of war. Or Yamama, one of the big battles, collecting the spoils of war. Sa'i Waqas was sitting and he was just crying, crying. He said, why are you crying? This is the day of victory. Fatah. He says, guys, what's wrong with you? One day, these people were the kings of this land. They disobeyed Allah. Allah took it away from them and gave it to us. I'm afraid that we might lose our purpose and this land will be given back to them. Why are you crying? There was a time Muslims had so many lands and today you can't even call it in those lands. Brothers and sisters, it is actions that build your relationship with Allah. Whatever you're doing, every single day, every single moment is a moment of actions. In Allah la yunbu ila suwarikum wa la ila islamikum wa la kin yunbu ila qulubikum wa amalikum man ja'a bil hasana fa lahu ashru amthaliha wa man ja'a bil sayyah fa la yujza illa mithla wa hum la yudlam. That's it. You have to bring the good. Allah multiplies the good in this world, makes life easy. You being Muslim and me being Muslim, we benefit without even understanding where we're going. For example, in our culture, in our tradition, if someone passes away, the, the type of condolence that someone gives, only Islam teaches. In our culture, in our religion, someone gets sick, the way we treat our loved ones and our sick ones, only Islam teaches. In our culture, in our religion, when parents get old, we're taught that your paradise is in serving them. If you lose this, when you get older, your children will not serve you. Because if you lose Islam, you, can, you can't be selective now. I want my children to respect me, but I want to party all day. It's not going to happen. I want my wife to be loyal. I want my husband to be loyal. It's not going to happen. Either you accept it all, or you lose it one by one. You benefit with it, with all the beneficiaries that come with it, all the benefits. Or one by one, you lose each benefit. And the worst loss is the loss of Allah's help. إِنْ يَنْصُرُكُمُ اللَّهُ فَلَا غَالِبَ لَكُمْ وَإِنْ يَخْذُلْكُمْ فَمَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَنْصُرُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ That is the greatest loss. That if we lose Allah, no one can help us. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us actions that are constantly gain and attract the rahmah of Allah. أَتَّائِبُونَ إِلَى رِحَابِكَ أَقْبَلُوا عَافُوا بِحُبِّكَ نَوْمُوا فَسَجَدُوا أَبْوَابُ كُلُّ مَالِكٍ قَدْ أُسِدَتْ وَ ولكم سائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه غفور